Which were not good for the people. He punished, imprisoned, and threatened people who believed that Jesus was the Messiah. He even hurt them. But Saul thought he was doing the right thing and felt that God was pleased with him because he did not believe in Jesus. He had pretty much taken care of all the believers who lived in his area and then. He wanted to go to Damascus to stop the believers there. He received letters from the high priest in Damascus in support of his doings. So Saul planned to bring back all the believers of Jesus in Damascus to Jerusalem in chains. Saul was on his way to Damascus with a group of people when he suddenly saw a bright light shining down on him. He fell to the ground in shock. Then a loud voice said, "Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who is speaking to me?" Afraid, Saul asked, "I am Jesus." The voice said, "It is me you are persecuting. Now, I want you to get up and go to the city, and I will tell you what to do next." The men who were traveling with Saul were speechless. They heard the voice but could not see the face of the man who spoke the words. Saul tried to get up, and that is when he realized that he was blind. He could not see anything or anyone. So the men with him led him into the city of Damascus. Saul stayed there for three days without seeing anything. Those three days, he did not eat or drink water. There was a believer of Jesus in Damascus called Ananias. One day, he had a vision where God asked him to go and talk to Saul. Right at that moment, when Ananias had a vision, Saul was praying. God told Saul that a man named Ananias would visit him, and he would lay hands on Saul, which would get back his sight. Ananias was not too happy with God's instructions. He said, "Lord, I have heard the terrible things that Saul did to your believers in Jerusalem, and he came here to do the same. Do you really want me to go see him?" "It's okay," God said. "Go ahead and do as I tell you." I have chosen Saul to take my message to the Gentiles, as well as to the people of Israel. Ananias obeyed God and went to see Saul. He put his hands on Saul's eyes and said, "Brother, God has sent me to get your sight back and be filled with the Holy Spirit." Immediately, something that looked like scales. Fell off Saul's eyes, and he could see everything. Saul was baptized right away. He drank some water and got back his strength. That was an amazing story, Harry. Oh yes, it was. The Holy Tales. Today's story is about Saul escaping from the Jewish leaders. After his encounter with Jesus, that sounds adventurous. Go on with the story, Holly. Let's not waste any more time. Saul's sudden encounter with Jesus on his way to Damascus had changed Saul completely. He stayed with some believers for a few days and immediately began preaching that Jesus was truly God's son. Everyone who heard him were amazed. They knew a few days earlier it was Saul who wanted to persecute the believers, but now he was one of them. 
The more Saul preached, the more powerful his preaching became. None of the Jews in Damascus were able to find any fault in him, and this made them very unhappy. Some of the Jewish leaders decided to kill him. They were constantly looking out for a chance to ambush him. Saul heard about their plans, and some of his new friends helped him escape. At night, they made Saul climb into a big basket, tied ropes to it, and lowered him down over the city wall. After he escaped, Saul went to Jerusalem and tried to meet the believers there. But they were all afraid of him because they didn't know how he had changed. They thought he was pretending to be a believer just to trick them. Barnabas came with him to talk to the believers. He told them all about how Saul met the Lord on his way to Damascus and how he preached powerfully afterwards. So the believers accepted Saul and from then he preached in Jerusalem. His preaching was very powerful and this angered the Jewish leaders wherever he went. The young church grew stronger in number and in strength because the believers walked with the Lord and were always filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. So, did you children like the story? Yes, yes, we did. It was wonderful. Well then, the Holy Tales. Today's story is about Paul preaching God's message through letters after he was arrested. Well, that sounds quite interesting. Well, it is. When Paul was arrested by the Roman commander in Jerusalem, Paul did not waste any time. His goal of preaching and spreading God's kingdom was always the first thing on his mind. Even in prison, he stayed focused on his goal. He wrote letters to the churches he visited and also to those he had only heard about, just to encourage the believers in their faith. Many of the New Testament books are actually letters from Paul. Romans were writing to the church in Rome to share the good news of Jesus. The two Corinthians were written to the church in Corinth, giving guidelines on how to live as believers. The two letters to Timothy and one to Titus are also books of the New Testament. Paul was eager for believers to be strong in their faith and in their obedience to God. That was a short and sweet story. Loved it. I am glad, Gumbo. So now, time for the question. To whom were the two Corinthians written? I know! They were written to a church in Corinth. Excellent, Tubby! Well done! Hope you were able to answer the question correctly, just like my friend Tubby. Well then, keep watching. We promise to be back soon. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the whole